Hi everyone, I'm Ryan Malatacham from VenezuelaAnalysis.com and this is the Venezuela Weekly News Review. So uh, this week has been one of those weeks, right? You might already have heard that the US elections took a pretty surprising turn with reality TV star Donald Trump defeating his rival Hillary Clinton. So uh, what does this mean for Venezuela? Well, the Venezuelan government has already responded with a pretty neutral communique congratulating Trump and expressing hopes for a, quote, new era in US-Venezuela relations. Trump himself hasn't publicly commented on Venezuela since winning the election, though on the campaign trail he did say he would oppose, quote, communism in Venezuela. He has also vowed to roll back the normalization of US diplomatic ties with Venezuela's close ally, Cuba. Meanwhile, in other big news this week, Venezuela's Attorney General, Reynaldo Munoz, has filed an injunction against the opposition-controlled National Assembly, accusing legislators of violating the Constitution. In particular, he claimed legislators disregarded the Constitution when they recently discussed launching an impeachment proceeding against President Nicolas Maduro. According to the Attorney General, the Venezuelan Constitution doesn't actually allow for presidential impeachments. The Supreme Court is expected to rule on the case sometime next week. Speaking of the opposition, a new poll has also found the majority of Venezuelans, 66% to be precise, believe the main opposition coalition, the MUD, has no plan to solve the country's economic crisis. The poll was conducted by reputable pollster Hinterlaces and also found that around 65% of Venezuelans view the MUD as deeply divided. Moving on, here at VA we've decided to introduce a new segment where I try to answer tough questions from our readers. And this week's question is certainly a tough one. The question is from Ricardo Baz, who asked, have the claps had any impact on alleviating the shortages? So for anyone who doesn't know, the claps are basically community committees mandated by the government to distribute basic food products. These committees actually represent one of the pillars of Maduro's efforts to reduce the scarcity of basic consumer goods, but they have been criticized by the opposition who claim the claps are biased towards government supporters. But have they actually worked? Well, the short answer is probably yes, at least to some extent. Now, there's a lot of qualifying words in that response, so let me explain. The reason I say yes, they've helped is because of a Hinterlaters poll that came out back in October. They found that over half of Venezuelans have at least benefited somewhat from the collapse. However, there's still a solid 40% of the population that say they haven't seen any benefits from this program. I actually asked another of our writers, Lucas Kona, to weigh in on this, and he said he felt like the collapse had helped around Caracas, but was pretty sceptical about the idea that they were working outside the capital just as well. Now, the reason I can't say for sure just how much they've impacted scarcity overall is because, well, we don't really know if scarcity has actually gone down since the collapse were introduced. So, long-time Venezuela news buffs will probably remember that for a period up until around a few years ago, the central bank was regularly publishing a scarcity index, which gave everyone a pretty good idea of how the scarcity problem was going. You could almost see on a week-to-week -week basis whether it was going up or down. Unfortunately, though, that is no longer being routinely released to the public, so it's pretty difficult now to say whether or not scarcity levels have actually gone down or... I don't know if people just feel like they're going down. We just don't know. But in any case, there are at least some positive signs that collapse could be helping, you know, at least a little bit. But it's clear that their effectiveness is, at the very least, somewhat limited. Anyway, thanks so much, Ricardo, for the really good question. I, I hope your response helps a little bit. I'm sorry I don't have more solid data, though. Uh, anyway, lastly, to finish off with, I'd like to leave you guys with some footage from Philben, which is Venezuela's annual book festival. This year's festival featured over 170 stalls for book lovers, along with workshops and, and much more. It's actually running until Sunday, so if you're in Caracas, you should totally check it out. If not, well, don't worry, your own Rachel and David Boy Parade Rojas got this footage early this week from inside the festival. Enjoy, and of course, remember that as usual, there are more details on all our top stories over at venezuelanalysis.com. Be sure to check it out. Anyway, see you next time. Have a great weekend.
bueno, la feria es algo que bueno, que ya para nosotros los caraqueños sobre todo es una tradición y la esperamos anualmente, ¿no? Eh, bueno, es maravilloso, como te digo, ya la esperamos con muchas ansias y bueno, a pesar de los momentos que pasamos, de crisis, podemos decirlo, para nosotros es como un oasis tener la oportunidad de distraernos de esta forma, ¿no? De esta forma sana. Muy bien, me siento emocionado. He aprendido más, muchas cosas más, de libros que no sabía que existían. A todas las ferias de libros yo siempre he venido. Y aquí se consigue, se consigue gran variedad de libros. Puedes conseguir de infantiles, de política, de economía, todo lo que buscas lo puedes conseguir aquí. Es la feria que espero todos los años. Realmente eso es algo indescriptible cuando uno tiene esta oportunidad de disfrutar los libros. Yo, a mí, yo me siento aquí como pez en el agua, que aquí está el objeto más preciado para mí, un libro.